Tonight on Y News, Meralco announces power rate hike this month. Philippine government to create an interagency team before the end of the year to come up with a revised revised version of the water concession agreement. Oil firms announce fuel price rollback tomorrow. Hyundai Sining calls persona non grata declaration in Manila City a human rights violation. And Miss, Miss South Africa, Zozibini Tunzi, crowned as Miss Universe 2019. Good evening. For the third consecutive month, the Manila Electric Company or Meralco will implement a power rate hike in December. Meanwhile, Meralco has sent contingents to Bicol to augment the efforts to restore power supply in the region. Joanano tells us why. The Manila Electric Company or Maralco increases its power rate by 30 centavos per kilowatt hour effective this month. This means if a typical household consumes an average of 200 kilowatt hours, there will be a 61 peso increase in its monthly electric bill, 91 pesos for every 300 kilowatt hours, 122 pesos for every 400 kilowatt hours, and 152 pesos for a 500 kilowatt hour consumption. Meralco spokesperson Joe Saldariaga explains the power rate hike is due to the series of yellow alerts which have prompted the price of electricity in the spot market to increase. Kasi pag yung uh, supply situation natin more than adequate, wala tayo yung mga tinatawag na uh, unforced outages, yellow alerts, or red alert status. Normally, prices sa market eases up in terms of uh, the overall rates. no. Pero pag nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, mga sudden outages na unscheduled, na nagre-resulta sa yellow or red alerts, um, pag tinignan mo yung historical data, talagang nagkakaroon ng pressure for prices to go up in the market. Aside from the yellow alert, the increase in the generation charge and other taxes also contributed in the power rate hike. Based on Meralco's monitoring, the price of electricity dropped in six months and went up in six months. To sum it up, there was a drop of 32 centavos net for the entire 2019. Meanwhile, Meralco has repaired electric posts damaged by Typhoon Disoy. The power distributor has sent personnel to augment the manpower needed in Bicol to restore power supply in the region. And uh, we have uh, sent a contingent to Bicol to assist Aleco in its post-typhoon restoration. As you know, uh, yung mga kababayan po natin sa Bicol ang pinakamabigat ng tinamaan nitong bagyo. So nandun, nandito po ang Meralco para po tumulong uh, matapos namin mabalik na sa normal yung amin pong prangkisa. Joan Aro, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasig City. The government will draft its own version of the water concession agreement expected to be finished before the year ends. Dante Amento tells us why. The government is creating a team headed by the Department of Justice or DOJ to revise the agreement with water concessionaires. DOJ Secretary Minardo Guevara says the team is a composite of lawyers from the DOJ, Department of Finance, Office of the Government, Corporate Council, and the Office of the Solicitor General. The legal team will study which provisions of the existing agreement with Manila Water and Manila must be amended. We're just trying to uh, remove yung mga provisions which uh, should be removed no? dahil uh, not favorable to uh, the people, no? to the consuming public. President Rodrigo Duterte has earlier criticized the two companies because of the allegedly onerous provisions. It started when the arbitration court in Singapore mandated the Philippine government to pay 10 billion pesos to Manila and Manila Water after the government lost the cases filed by the two water concessionaires. Last year, the arbitration court mandated the Philippine government to pay 3.42 billion pesos to Manila after the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System or MWSS refused to implement the water rate increase from 2013 to 2017. Last week, the government was also ordered to pay 7.39 billion pesos to Manila Water due to the delayed water price hike in 2015. President Duterte has already disclosed 
he will not follow the arbitration ruling which he says is against the public policy. We'll do it uh, within the government, Muna, and once we are ready with our own uh, version of what a uh, water, good water concession agreement should be, that's the time that we'll uh, sit down with the water concessioners. Secretary Guevara adds, should the water companies not agree with the amendments to the agreement, the government is ready to go to court. Dantiamento, UNTV, News and Rescue, City of Manila. Some senators believe the concession agreement with Manilad and Manila Water may cancel, may be canceled by the government. This comes amid the issues concerning what has been described as unfair and an onerous contract. Nel Maribohok reports why. Senator Christopher Bongo criticized the two water concessionaires, Manila and Manila Water, in his privileged speech today. Senator Go called on the Metropolitan Water Works and Sewerage System, or MWSS, for the possibility of terminating the extension of concession deal. I am also urging the MWSS to explore the possibility of terminating the extension of the concessioner agreement the President might also ask that to you. Senator Goh said the concession deal is unfair to the Filipino people and should be reviewed. Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel meanwhile believes the government's agreement with the two water concessionaires may be cancelled by the current administration. Since hindi pa expired ang original contract, wala pang 2022, hindi pa pwedeng i-invoke ang extension. Ha? Kung talagang extension yan. So therefore, since hindi pa yan implemented, pwede pa siyang i-disregard ng Duterte administration. According to Senator Pimentel, the government should come up with a stricter agreement with the concessionaires which is advantageous to the government. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte says he does not want to compromise with water concessionaires Manila Water and Mainilad on their onerous contracts unless he is able to talk with them together with government lawyers. According to the chief executive, this can be regarded as plunder. President Duterte made the statement during the oath-taking of the newly appointed generals and flag officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and star rank officers of the Philippine National Police in Malacanang this afternoon. He also appealed to the policemen and soldiers not to allow the government not to recover the trillions of pesos collected by these water concessionaires. It can be recalled that Ayala-led Manila Water said it is willing to come up with a workable solution with the government on the recent arbitration decision in Singapore favoring the firm over the Philippine government. Kaya gusto ko silang makausap. Hindi ito maariglohan ng hindi ko makausap yung mga Concessionaire. So yung gusto ko harap ang abogado ng gobyerno na po nagawa nitong kontrata nito. Pump price will take effect. Pump price cut will take effect Tuesday as announced by several oil firms. At 6 a.m. tomorrow, Shell will slash its fuel prices by 40 centavos per liter of gasoline and kerosene. The price of diesel will remain according to Shell. Petron, meanwhile, will cut 30 centavos per liter of gasoline and kerosene and 10 centavos per liter in diesel. Clean fuel on Sunday already dropped 40 centavos per liter from their current price for gasoline and 10 centavos per liter from diesel. This is the second week that oil companies imposed a price cut due to the adjustment in pump prices in the international market. Miss South Africa Zozibini Tunzi claims the Miss Universe 2019 crown in Atlanta, Georgia. And although Miss Philippines Gazini Ganados uh, was not part of the top three candidates, Filipinos continue to root for her. Ruth De Meza reports. new Miss Universe is South Africa.
Africa. <laughs> Sofia Aragon was hailed second runner up. I've always believed that as women, we have to Gray performed her last walk as Miss Universe 2018 before passing the crown. She thanked the Philippines and the world for the opportunity given to her in the past year. She also gave a piece of advice to her fellow beauty queens. What I would tell them to know what they're here representing because we women, we don't come out here with our name across our chest. We come here representing a whole country. Gazzini Ganados, Philippines! Miss Philippines Gazzini Ganados became part of the five wildcard candidates who entered the top 20, though she failed to advance to the top 10. Nonetheless, Filipinos who came to witness the pageant and to personally root for Gazzini continue to support her in the Miss Universe Philippines. I think it's still, um, it's still a great honor, to be honest, because if you think about it, out of 90, uh, 90 contestants, being in the top 20 is still like a, like a big honor. And she did really well up until, um, you know, like there's some that contestants that just stood out. And that's not her fault, you know, that's not, that's out of her control, and I feel like people should accept that. Well, dear, you're, you're a winner. You are our Miss Universe. Um, I believe that there, a, bright, a, a brighter future awaits you, and I believe that Filipinos would remain the same in terms of their love and support for you. So, we can't wait to see you any time today, tonight, or maybe tomorrow. The Philippines may have failed to win the 2019 crown, but clearly, woman empowerment wins in the Miss Universe beauty pageant. Ruth DeMessa, UNTV News and Rescue, Atlanta, Georgia. Malacanang lauds Miss Philippines Gazini Ganados for representing the country well at the Miss Universe 2019 pageant held in Atlanta, Georgia. According to Presidential Spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel, Salvador Panelo, Ganados has given pride and glory to the Philippine nation by showcasing the unique beauty and talent of the Filipina. The palace also believes her experience in joining the prestigious beauty pageant should add further to her development as a beauty queen. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. The Philippine National Police Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group targets over 10 active cops involved in illegal drugs recycling. AFP and PNP support the possible resumption of peace talks with the CPP and PA. Panday Sining calls the persona non grata declaration in Manila City a human rights violation. The Department of Health extends polio mass immunization in Mindanao until December 13. And Pasig River Ferry Service offers free rides until January 31, 2020. Good evening. The case operational plan or co-plan of the Philippine National Police Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group targets more than 10 active policemen involved in the recycling of illegal drugs. The police also revealed that a former police corporal was involved in selling the recycled illegal drugs. Laya Ilagan tells us why. The Philippine National Police Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group or PNPI may confirms there remains more than 10 active policemen involved in the recycling of illegal drugs. PNPI MEG spokesperson, Police Major Robert Reyes says those caps are from the National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO, Region 3 and Region 4A. Reyes reveals these are the targets of their co-plan or case operational plan. Yun din po yung focus uh, na trabaho namin sa intern cleansing, uh, yung mga get rid ng mga police scalawags. So then sinama namin yung war and drugs, so we focus po namin yung co-plan namin doon. The PNP IMEG spokesperson adds the identified policemen are involved in keeping the illegal drugs confiscated in anti-drug operations, while former police corporal Kirso Laktautau sells them. Isa sa mga nakita namin na verify namin na nagre-recycle, uh -huh. nagre-recycle siya ng drugs. Uh, yung may mga ibang unit na nagsisavings, siya naman yung nag-distribute. 
Laktao Tao was killed in a by bust operation conducted by IMAG early this morning in Novaliches, Quezon City. The operatives recovered one 9mm Beretta pistol, three empty shells, various IDs, seven sachets of shabu, 2,000 pesos by bust money, and two cellular phones. PNP spokesperson Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak has earlier revealed to UNTV News there are still 22 ninja cops on IMEG's list. One is police major, two are lieutenants, and 19 are police non-commissioned officers. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. Come, Krame. The country's armed forces and national police support the possible resumption of peace negotiations with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines. However, the Department of National Defense is not keen on recommending holiday truce. Harleen Delgado details why. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, support the possible resumption of peace talks with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines. The political wing of the Communist Party of the Philippines' New People's Army, or CPP-NPA. In a statement, AFP spokesperson Brigadier General Edgar de Revalo says it is meant towards sustainable peace, which is what the President and the Armed Forces desire. The Philippine National Police also support the possible recommencement of peace negotiations. The PNP clarify, however, they will continue to go after communist officials with standing arrest warrants until the talks are official and the courts order to suspend the warrants. Sumusuporta ang PNP rito, sabalit kinakailangan na magkaroon ng uh, abiso rin ang ating mga korte patungkol dito sa mga uh, standing warrants of arrest. Meanwhile, in a statement, CPP founding chair Jose Maria Sison welcomed the president's desire to resume the peace negotiations. But Sison remains firm. The formal meeting cannot be done in the Philippines. The palace has assured that Sison and other communist leaders will not be arrested should they agree to come back to the country for the negotiations. National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon has earlier said President Duterte is serious in resuming the peace talks. In March, the president officially terminated the peace negotiations with the communist group. Meanwhile, the Department of National Defense will not recommend a holiday truce with the communist rebels. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana says they will agree to a ceasefire only if the NPA will stop their hostile activities such as recruiting new members, increasing militias, and extorting from businesses. Ahead of the upcoming 50th CPP founding anniversary on December 26, the PNP have instructed police units to raise their alert level. Military operations will also continue. Last year, the government refused to agree with a holiday truce despite the communist group's announcement of a unilateral ceasefire. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. Militant group Pandai Sining cries human rights violation after the City Council of Manila declared them persona non grata in the country's capital. Bernardades explains why. Strongly condemning and declaring the group Pandai Sining the cultural arm of Anakbayan as persona non grata in the city of Manila. Vice Mayor Hani Lacuna, together with Mayor Isko Moreno Dumagoso, announced last Friday a resolution submitted by the City Council declaring Panday Sining the militant group liable for vandalizing the Lagusnilad underpass in Manila as persona non grata. Four members of Panday Sining were arrested by Manila Police District at the Bonifacio Day Rally after getting caught in the act of vandalism. But Panday Sining, in response, said the City Council's move is a clear violation of their human rights. Sa deklarasyon na ito nila Isko at ang Manila City Council, hindi na lamang ito usapin ng protest art versus vandalism or graffiti or whatnot. No, usapin na ito ng malayang pamamahayag sa panahon na tinatanggalan ng karapatan no, yung mga mamamayang Pilipino. Malinaw na talagang ginagawang human, ano, human rights violation na no, yung ginagawa sa ating mga kasamahan. It's not for me. It's not. It's the council. Good luck. I, I wish them all the best and good health. The militant group continues to call for the release of their arrested members. It can be recalled the city mayor had repeatedly warned the group they could be sanctioned for vandalism. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila.
The former deputy spokesperson of former President Benigno Noynoy Aquino III confirmed he is at the Makati Medical Center on Monday but only for a scheduled checkup and a routine procedure. Abigail Valte issued a statement following a report which claimed that Aquino was rushed to a hospital to undergo a heart procedure. She also assured the public that Aquino is all right and in high spirits, adding that he even made a joke about his supposed heart procedure. This is not the first time that concerns were raised about Aquino's health. Last August, the 59-year-old former president skipped the death anniversary commemoration of his late father, former Senator Benigno Aquino Jr. His camp previously said Aquino did not attend the event as he was down with the flu. A commuter group petitions to stop the operation of five motorcycle taxi companies they say are illegally operating in Metro Manila and other parts of the country. This comes before ANCAS finishes its pilot testing this month. Joe Anano tells us why. The Lawyers for Commuter Safety and Protection, or LCSP, filed a petition in the Quezon City Regional Trial Court today asking the court to issue a temporary restraining order against the operation of five motorcycle taxi companies. These are Remove Things Philippines Incorporated, or Joyride, Hubble Rides Corporation, Isabay, Sampal Dala Corporation, and Transserve Corporation. According to the LCSP, these motorcycle taxis can be considered color room and are unsafe for the riding public to patronize. Attorney Raymond Fortun, an LCSP member, explains the riders of these motorcycle taxi firms are not trained and have no insurance and therefore pose danger for passengers. Currently part of the pilot program. All of them obviously are not being regulated with regard to certain standards. Ano po yung standards na yan? Ultimong minimum na training para dun sa mga motorcycle riders nila. Wala pong supervision. Kung yan po ay merong tamang helmets para dun sa rider as well as sa commuter, wala pong supervision. Hindi sila nakikipag-coordinate with regard to possible insurance. The group clarified they are not against competition. Alinawin natin na hindi kami against sa competition. And we are pushing for competition dahil importante no, na ma-regulate itong mga motorcycle taxi. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board has earlier said six new motorcycle taxi firms had expressed their interest to operate in the country and would also undergo pilot testing like ANCAS. The pilot testing of ANCAS is set to finish on December 26. As of now, the Department of Transportation is waiting for the Technical Working Group's final report on the six-month pilot testing of ANCAS. Through this, the government can determine or not it would allow motorcycle taxis to operate on the country's road along with the passage of a law to legalize their operation. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue Quezon City. Defending champion AFP Cavaliers reclaims the top spot of the team standings in the UNTV Cup Season 8. Meanwhile, NHA builders and judiciary managers improve their chances to enter the next round of the tournament. Bernard Dadis explains why. The bullet boy at Bautista's 8 out of 12 Rainbow County shot made a huge impact on the road to another win for the defending champ AFB Cavaliers yesterday at San Juan Gymnasium 77-65. The soldiers demolished Malacanang PSC Kamao to return to top one of the team standings. Bautista admitted that losing to Judiciary Magis last week served as a wake-up call to them. <laughs> So, yun, naging maganda naman at medyo nakabalik kami. The Cavaliers dominated not only in the three-point area, but the rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks department. We can't afford to lose this game. Bababa yung ano namin. So, bumalik kami sa scoreboard ulit. Sabi ko, let's be aggressive. Nangyari naman. NHA Builders claimed the fourth spot after beating PITC Global Traders in a heart-stopping game 71-63. Global Traders controlled the ball game from the start after the third quarter. 
But the builders made a huge comeback in the last quarter with Rodolfo Sumayang leading the rally by collecting 11 points, while team captain John Derek Dyson contributed 17 points. Both were hailed the best players of the game. For head coach Bennett Pallad, boosting the morale of his players is the key for them to step up in the game. Medyo nag-focus kami kasi yung first quarter and second quarter medyo mabigat. Pati tawagan, dalawa yung unintentional ko, uh, si Alvin na wala, di ba? So sabi ko sa kanila, kailangan nila mag-step up kasi wala na tayong player, wala na akong pwede ipasok. Meanwhile, two-time champion Judiciary Magis registered its third straight victory after defeating Phil Health Plus 112-86. Christopher De La Cruz with 24 points and John Bergogno with 15 points were both chosen the best players of the game. Uh, preparation namin more on defense sa teamwork. Ano sa tingin ko yung nag-boost din sa confidence namin yung manalo kami sa EFP. Dahil malaking bagay sa amin talaga yun eh. Sila yung pinakamalak sa team eh. Judiciary with 4 wins and 3 losses is currently on the 7th spot of the 8 teams battling in the 2nd round elimination of the League of Public Servants this season. Well, siguro nagjajal na kami at saka medyo panay nga talo kaya uh, ginagawa namin lahat para manalo na. Bernard Dottis, UNTV News and Rescue, San Juan City. The country's capital now boasts of new Instagrammable spot, which are not actually new. My Bermudas will tell us why. In this newly renovated bridge in Manila City, you'd imagine you're in Pont Alexander III Bridge in Paris, France. Who would have thought this bridge can be found at the heart of the Philippines' capital? Oh, kasi before, lagi ako nagdadaan dito ilang taon na kasi pagpabalik-balik ako ng Divisoria, namimili ako. Okay na, lalo yung mga yan, ang galing-galing yung woodcraft, yung sculpture. Kasi ang business ko nasa sculpture eh. So, kita ko yung mga de details, maganda, okay na. So, Instagrammable. Binondo has been the favorite spot of couple Mayrick and Bernadine for three years. Their prenup shoot was produced and taken on Jones Bridge. Para kang tumatakbo lang talaga, nakagawa na yung nakasudan. Pumunta lang sa bridge takto, walang tao, bago lang. The bridge, first called Puente de España, was opened in 1875. It connects Intramuros and Binondo. It has been destroyed a couple of times due to typhoons and calamities. It was in September this year when the Manila City government rehabilitated Jones Bridge. The statues of La Madre Filipina, which symbolize justice, democracy, gratitude, and progression, were also given a new life. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. And to complete the most significant news for this day, why news continues, here are the top stories. The Department of Health extends the polio mass immunization in Mindanao until December 13. Meanwhile, the Health Department says the public's trust in the government's vaccination campaign has been restored. Aiko Miguel clarifies why. The Department of Health's nationwide mass immunization against polio ended on Saturday, December 7. But most areas in Mindanao did not reach the 95% immunization threshold, according to the DOH. The overall coverage for Mindanao was only 93%. Region 9 got 93.6%, 94% in Region 10, 94.6% in Region 11, 88.5% in Region 12. Caraga Region had 93.2%. 
percent, and BARM had 96 percent immunization coverage, but still with a high total number of children unvaccinated. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, the polio mass immunization in Mindanao will be extended until December 13. The main reasons for a setback in the polio mass immunization in Mindanao are poverty and war. Children not yet reached by the immunization campaign are those in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas or GIDA. So we hope for a uh, more um, effective coordination uh, with the local government units, the local health workers. The DOH is confident the immunization coverage in Mindanao will reach the target threshold until its target completion date. The DOH also reports the immunization coverage in the national capital region reached 109%. The NCR is among the regions greatly affected by the Dengvaxia controversy issue. According to the health chief, the huge rate is proof the public's confidence and trust in the government's immunization program has been fully recovered. I, uh think that people, uh, parents, mothers in particular, have already finally realized the importance of uh, immunization uh, for the children and that the immunization program of the DOH uh, is effectively uh, implemented with, of course, their cooperation and support. The DOH will release the overall assessment of the polio mass immunization on December 17. Such mass anti-polio immunization campaign is the government's move to prevent the spread of the disease after a polio outbreak was declared once again in the country after 19 years of being polio-free. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, two bills seeking to regulate video gaming in the country are pending in the House of Representatives. This as several lawmakers see the need to thwart the adverse effects of what they call gaming addiction. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Video games, online gaming. This has been a hobby among many Filipinos nowadays. Both the young and professionals seem to have fun just by clicking the mouse or turning the joystick. But despite the entertainment that video games bring, several studies show that video gaming affects a person's personality and even a child's school performance. According to experts, playing violent video games increases aggressiveness. Children also become prone to vices like smoking, alcohol use, risky sexual intercourse, and delinquency. Video gaming also degrades a child's performance in school. This is because instead of studying, children tend to use their extra time on playing video games. Two bills pending in the House of Representatives this year aim to regulate video gaming in the country. House Bill No. 3388 aims to ban all elementary and high school students in the country from entering internet or computer shops and playing video games during class hours. House Bill 1368 or the Video Games and Outdoor Media Regulation Act, on the other hand, aims to place the regulation of video games under the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board or MTRCB. This is so that video games will be checked properly and given a classification and prevent minors from accessing or playing video games with adult or mature content. The bills are now under the House Committee on Basic Education and Culture and the House Committee on Public Information to see the possibility of implementing the proposals. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. In other news, new ferry boats are ready to run in the Pasig River to accommodate the riding public who want to avoid the bumper-to-bumper -bumper road situation in Metro Manila. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Congestion on thoroughfares, especially in Metro Manila, is a day-to-day -day challenge for commuters. While for the government, finding ways to resolve this problem has been one of the major concerns. One way it found is utilizing the ferry system that runs in the Pasig River. To encourage the riding public, the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA led the relaunching of the Pasig River Ferry Service in Manila City today. With the anticipated heavy traffic as the holiday season approaches, there is no better time than now to see how Pasig River can help ease our traffic congestion problems. Kung yung mga kababayan namin na pupunta 
outside of Manila going to Pasig, Kila Mayor Vico, uh, one of the most efficient alternative way is sumakay ng ferry. In accordance with President Rodrigo Duterte's directive, the MMDA and other concerned government agencies have been working on lowering fare in the Pasig River Ferry. And as a treat to the riding public, ferry rides will be available free of charge from today until January 31, 2020. Pinakiusapan po natin na going until January 31, no? hanggat sa kaya po ng, uh, ng budget ng uh, MMDA na maging libre po ito. To augment the operation of the ferry service, the Pasig City government provided two of their passenger ferry boats. Each of the new ferry boats has a 57 seating capacity, while the current passenger boats can accommodate only 16 to 36 passengers. The Pasig River ferry system has 11 stations between Pinagbuhat and Pasig City and is called the Pasig City. The Pasig River ferry service is open from 6 in the morning until 6 in the evening from Monday to Friday. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. And for the news abroad, here's RL Kamiya reporting live from Takatsuka, Japan. RL, good evening. Good evening, William. And for the news abroad, five persons were confirmed dead and a massive emergency operation is underway after a volcano erupted on New Zealand's White Island. LC Marcos reports. At least five people have died after a volcano erupted in New Zealand. Police said the number of people missing is in double figures as they try to rescue up to 50 people from White Island, which is uninhabited but frequented by tourists. Visitor Michael Shada, who was on a boat leaving after a morning tour, filmed the blast showing a thick flume of ash and smoke above the mountain. Another group of tourists can be seen waiting to be rescued from the island. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said tourists were both from New Zealand and overseas. The National Emergency Management Agency issued an alert to possible new eruptions or moderate seismic activity. Authorities established a security perimeter around the island, imposed a no-fly zone, and canceled excursions with immediate effect. Police are warning people living near the area to be aware of the potential for ashfall and to stay indoors. White Island, or Fakaari, is off the coast of North Island and is one of the country's most active volcanoes. Despite that, the island is a tourist destination with frequent day tours and scenic flight available. LC Marcus, UNTV News and Rescue, New Zealand. Hundreds of thousands of Hong Kong pro-democracy protesters returned to the streets on Sunday for the so-called March on Human Rights Day as they prepare to mark six months since the start of the protests that have ravaged the semi-autonomous Chinese city. Stephanie C. details this report. Half a year after the protests broke out, a new wave of black filled the streets of Hong Kong as protesters came out to remind the authorities of their key demands on the occasion of World Human Rights Day, which takes place Tuesday. It was the first march called by the Civil Human Rights Front that got police approval since 21st July, the date from which mobilizations convoked by the organization have been systematically banned. Only stationary concentrations were authorized, though marches called by other groups have been allowed to take place. In a statement, the organizers of Sunday's march urged the government to respond to their five demands in order to fulfill their duty to protect international human rights and defend human dignity. The CHRF warned that Sunday was the last chance for the head of the Hong Kong executive, Carrie Lam, to comply with the five demands of the protesters. The demands include an independent investigation into the handling of the protests by the police, an amnesty for those arrested, and universal suffrage. Monday will mark the completion of six months since the first Hong Kong protest against a controversial bill to allow extradition of suspects to China and other countries. Although the bill was subsequently withdrawn, the protests have turned into a wider movement seeking to improve democracy in the city-state, including the demand for universal suffrage and safeguard the region's partial autonomy from Beijing. Stephanie C, UNTV News and Rescue.
Global warming is robbing the world's oceans of oxygen according to a report submitted by the International Union for Conservation of Nature to the Climate Change Summit in Madrid. Kath Dumaraos reports. The amount of oxygen in the world's oceans decreased by 2% between 1960 and 2010 and is expected to go down by a further 3-4% to by the year 2100 as a result of global warming. This situation was outlined in a report by the International Union for Conservation of Nature or IUCN, Oceans Deoxygenation, Everyone's Problem, presented at the United Nations Climate Change Summit in Madrid. According to the study, this loss of oxygen is closely linked to the warming of the planet and the acidification of the oceans caused by an increase in carbon dioxide as a result of greenhouse gas emissions and the so-called fertilization of the oceans. Most of the excess heat retained by the Earth is absorbed by the oceans, which inhibits the diffusion of oxygen from the surface to the depths, and the increase in nutrients that arrive via rivers leads to the proliferation of algae and an increase in the demand for oxygen. The study identified over 900 coastal areas and semi-enclosed seas around the world that are subject to the effects of eutrophication, the excessive enrichment of the water with nutrients or organic matter. More than 700 of these areas have hypoxia problems or a lack of oxygen compared to 45 of them back in the 1960s. And the volume of water that has been completely depleted of oxygen has quadrupled according to the report. The researchers point out that eutrophication induced hypoxia can be reversed if certain measures are taken, but hypoxia caused by global warming is more difficult to combat. They are therefore calling for a drastic effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in order to reduce the rate of oxygen reduction in the oceans. The report pointed to the need to reduce waste from agriculture, industry, wastewater, and to avoid other sources of stress for the world's oceans such as pollution and overfishing. Kat Numaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the stories from around the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, R.L. Kamiya, reporting live from Takatsuka, Japan. The Philippines has achieved a historic milestone in its journey at the Southeast Asian Games 2019, crossing their previous best of 112 gold medals. As of 5 p.m., the Filipino athletes have secured a total of 118 gold medals, 89 silvers, and 97 bronzes, while their overall tally of medals is over 300, over the 300 mark. As things stand, Philippines are comfortably leading the way in the table ahead of Thailand with 69 gold, 82 silvers, 86 bronzes, and Vietnam with a 69 gold, 67 silver, and 84 bronzes. Steve Harvey suffered another confusion in the Miss Universe stage Sunday after announcing the wrong winner of the 2019 National Costume category, but it was not completely his fault. Mirasol Abogadil tells us why. Here's a look at the winner, Philippines. Miss Universe host Steve Harvey was right all along. Miss Universe Philippines 2019 and Miss Universe 2019 Top 20 finalist Gazini Ganados has indeed won the Best National Costume Special Award, not Miss Malaysia Shweta Sikan. In a Twitter post after the pageant on Monday, Miss Universe declared, Miss Universe Philippines Gazini Ganados is the winner of the Miss Universe 2019 National Costume Competition. It can be recalled that during the pageant earlier today, Harvey announced Gazzini as the winner of the special award, with the beauty queen's photo flashing on the screen. But it was Miss Malaysia Shweta Sikon who was on stage to receive the award in her Peranakan Cuisine-inspired national costume. The mix-up followed the comedian's 2015 flub when he announced the wrong winner of the Miss Universe pageant. The comedian made fun of the past mix-up on Sunday night show. This is a lot. Yes. It's not Philippines. It's Malaysia. Okay, well, let me explain something to you. I just read that in the teleprompter. Y'all gonna quit doing this to me. I can read. It said now. They're trying to fix it now. See, this is what they did to me back in 2015. Played me short like that. This is Malaysia. I really love this national costume of Malaysia. It's crazy. A 
According to a report from Insider, a source close to the Miss Universe said that Sikon was also being featured in the broadcast so that viewers could find out more about her elaborate costume. But she was not aware that Ganado's name would be called first, prompting the confusion. Gazidi's costume was inspired by the Philippine Eagle. It was made by designer Cari Santiago. Gazzini bowed out of the pageant early, failing to secure a spot in the top 10. South African beauty queen Zuzini Tunzi eventually won the pageant, bringing home the crown to South Africa for a third time. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this December 9, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo, and before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Pag nagkakaroon tayo ng uh, mga sudden outages na unscheduled, na nagre-resulta sa yellow or red alerts, uh, pag tinignan mo yung historical data, talagang nagkakaroon ng pressure for prices to go up in the market. We're just trying to uh, remove yung mga provisions which uh, should be removed no? dahil uh, not favorable to uh, the people, no? to the consuming public. Sumusuporta ang PNP rito, sabalit kinakailangan na magkaroon ng uh, abiso rin ang ating mga korte patungkol dito sa uh, standing warrants of arrest. All of them obviously are not being regulated with regard to certain standards. Ano po yung standards na yan? Ultimong minimum na training para dun sa mga motorcycle riders nila. Wala pong supervision. Malinaw na talagang ginagawang human, ano, human rights violation na, na yung ginagawa sa ating mga kasamahan. I want children to look at me and see my face. And I want them to see their faces reflected in mine. Thank you.